right, let's try this thing again, shall we? Let's try her again. So I'd like to welcome you guys back, man. You guys that was here the first time, I apologize, man. My my audio was acting funny. You know, was picking up the mic on the computer and not my actual mic. And, you know, I'm just picky about my stuff, man. So, you know what I mean? I had to start this thing over. So let's go ahead and, and wait for you guys to get in here, man. You know, it's a Friday evening. You know, my son is upstairs. My wife is upstairs. She's on the phone. Uh, I see that the lighting is bugging out. <laughs> So you're seeing me go in and out different shades and things of that nature. But uh, let's see if we can get that fixed as well. I think we should be good about right there. All right, so let's make it happen, man. I'm going to wait for you guys to get in here a bit, and then we'll get started. All right, like I said, I apologize, man, if you was here a few moments ago. And, uh, you know, I had to start it over. So just confirm, guys, that you are able to hear me and, you know, let me know, make sure everything is working because we had some technical difficulties and then we'll go ahead and get it cracking. So somebody just give me a thumbs up or just write in. Okay, I'm good. Appreciate that, Kenyon Wright. What's good, man? So all right, man, let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are again, guys. Um, I told you I would come back with a pregame on Friday. And, um, you know, I'll give my quick synopsis, if you will, as far as what I think will happen in the other games. And then we'll talk a little bit about the Pittsburgh Steelers and the keys to victory in terms of what we're going to need to do, man, to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars this time. You know, I did have an opportunity, of course, the rest of the week since Tuesday to, you know, kind of reflect, look at some film, you know, like I'm a coach or something like that. Isn't it funny, guys, as a Steeler fan, I know my boy Tony does the same thing. We feel like we have to scout <laughs> the team as if we can lend a hand and let them know what they need to do. Isn't that funny? But... You know, when you a Steeler fan, y'all know how it is, man. We we Steelers, man. We bleed black and yellow, eat, sleep, whatever else you want to call it. Steelers. It's just the Steelers, man. You know, Steelers unite. Steelers nation unite. We just, you feel like a part of the team, man. So myself watching film and things like that is just my nutty way of feeling like I'm more connected. But anyway, as I've done that, man, I have a better idea, you know, very similar to what I said on Tuesday, but I have a better idea of what the Steelers will, you know, definitely need to focus on and get the job done. So let's take a look at a couple of these other games first, man. So I can't wait to watch some good football tomorrow, especially the NFC. We got the Falcons and the Eagles. Uh, I'm going to go with the Falcons, man. I just... Uh, and, you know, with the Eagles being another team in Pennsylvania, you know, anytime they're not playing the Steelers, you know, I, I slightly root for them. I'm not a fan of them because you can't be a fan of more than one team. That's just my rule. I'm Steelers. But, you know, you look at your other team, you know, your other home state team or whatever, you know, where you live, where you reside, whether you were born in PA or not. If you live in PA and, you, you know, some people have adopted teams when they move to PA, you know, you kind of look at what the other teams are doing and, you know, I look at the Eagles and I'm like, okay, they're playing good football. Hey, if the Steelers are not there, it'd be cool to see them do their thing. But should we meet up with the Steelers? I want to stump a mud hole in the Eagles. It's just like, I mean, uh, should we meet up with the Eagles rather? I don't want to stump a mud hole against the Eagles <laughs> in the Super Bowl. But anyway, I don't know, man. I just don't know if the Eagles, they're not the same team with like without Carson Wentz. Uh... Nick Foles can get the job done. You know, he's a serviceable backup, but I just don't know. You think back to some of the games, man, and you look at what Carson Wentz did. His play, extending the play, you know, getting things done with his legs and making some ridiculous throws. I remember watching some games on either Sunday night or Monday night when he's halfway to the ground and he throws the ball 40 yards or so downfield to Aguilar. Just... You know, the ac acrobatic stuff that he's able to do, the athleticism, you lose that with a Nick Foles. A Nick Foles is more of a pocket, you know, passer, pocket presence type of guy. You know, he has one as well in the past, but we'll see. It all depends on what Nick Foles is going to show up. But I just don't know if the Eagles are as powerful without Wentz, you know, conducting that train. You know, I just feel like that. And their defense is legit, but... The Atlanta Falcons look like they, they, they're on to something right now. You know, they've gotten hot. They faced the Rams. So, you, comparably, you could say that they've seen already a defense 
that's com- you know comparable to what you're going to see with the Eagles when you talk about the interior and maybe the you know you could possibly say the Rams defense on the back end might be a little better than the Eagles. You know, the Eagles have some decent guys back there. I love Malcolm Jenkins, but they got some guys that's a little suspect. You know, you know hit or miss type guys. So I just feel like man if Atlanta can get their offense rolling with of course Julio Jones, Muhammad Sanu, you know, Devonte Freeman, shout outs to the FSU and Tevin Coleman. I mean, they just got a lot of weapons. And their defense steps up and plays when they need to. So we'll see. But I'm gonna just I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Falcons. I'm gonna say Falcons, you know, pull off the upset. And there you have it. <clears throat> Excuse me. As far as the Titans and the Patriots, I gotta go Patriots, man. I mean, conventional wisdom will tell me to go Patriots, but I'll put an asterisk on this. If the Titans are able to make it a hard nosed game and they can run the football, it could be interesting can be interesting. We've all seen where the Patriots can be vulnerable. I mean, we all saw where Al Steelers, technically on the field, won the game, even though they did their job with their last drive and Gronkowski and Brady hooked up. But the Steelers did enough to win that game. You know, whether they called the touchdown back or not, even you take that away, the Steelers still did enough to win the game and was even in position still to win the game. And you look at the teams who've actually had success against the Patriots. A team like Carolina, you know what I mean? If the Titans can get the run game going, it could be very interesting. Now, wouldn't that be crazy if the Titans are able to get the win and we're able to get the win and then the AFC Championship is in Heinz Field? I promise you I'll be at that game. I'm sick at the fact that I'm not going to be at this game Sunday because my father-in-law, you know, for whatever reason he wasn't feeling, you know, he didn't really want to go. And that's usually who I go to the games with, you know, unless my cousin Floyd, shout out to Floyd, unless he comes up, you know, he lives out in VA and, you know, we've gone to a couple games together, but probably wasn't going to be able to happen this weekend unless I went with my father-in-law. He didn't seem like he wanted to make the trip, so I'm not going to be there. I'm sick about it, guys, because I really wanted to be at the game. But if we win and we get an AFC championship game at Pittsburgh, I will be there. (laughs) I will definitely be there. All right. So the next game, Saints and the uh, Vikings. Woof. Woo. I don't know. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of what I said about the Falcons. Offensively, the Saints can be a problem. However, defensively, are they that legit? I don't think so. I think they're very streaky. Um, you know, I think the Saints' defense is similar to our Steelers. You know, sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they give up big plays, sometimes they don't. Uh, I don't know if I trust Case Keenum. Um, no disrespect to him. I just don't, I don't know if Case Keenum is really that guy that can really go on a Super Bowl run. You know what I mean? Um, he's played well. You know, he's played very well. And I don't think it's fair to judge him playing us because you know he gets to start you know later in the week he, he wasn't really the focal point you know Bradford goes down he gets to start the rest was history you know the Steelers got that win but he has played really really well since then I just don't know if you look at the crop of quarterbacks that are left in these playoffs I don't know if Case Keenum if I'm believing him over Drew Brees or even Matt Ryan at the end of the day to make a real Super Bowl run so uh, look at it like that. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe the Vikings being at home. They will be inside because, you know, the Vikings play in a dome. I'm going to go Vikings. I'm going to go Vikings. Why not? I'm going to just jump out on the limb there and say maybe the Vikings get it done. They protect home field. Et cetera, et cetera, with an opportunity to play the, you know, play the Super Bowl at home. Come on, that's crazy. So they're going to be motivated. So now, guys, let's get to what y'all really are here for. Let's talk about these Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. Uh, this is what we're going to have to do. Got to run the football. We definitely got to run the football, and we need a balanced attack. And, oh, shout-outs to Jesse Williams, man. I didn't even see this. Shout out to Jesse Williams, man, offering the donation, man. Blessings to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate when you guys do that, man. Y'all have no idea 
It's genuinely coming from the heart. Appreciate you for that, man. Shout outs to him. Now, the Steelers, what we need to focus on, of course, is running the football. But here's the key. Balance. Balance. We need a balanced attack. We cannot, absolutely cannot afford Ben Roethlisberger passing the ball 55 times. We can't do that this time. Nobody, not this go, not this go around. If you're passing the ball 55 times against the Jags, that says bad news. That says because we're trying to catch up, or we're just totally getting away from controlling the clock. Because if you're passing the ball that much, it's either working or you're trying to get yourself back in in position to make you know to get back into the game. Now again, if we come out there and we throwing it all across the park, you know, all over the yard. You know, we're trying to make a point, like, forget your defense. We ain't scared of y'all, whatever. Okay, if it's working. But I don't want to see a 55 attempt <laughs> pass ratio for Ben Roethlisberger in this game. I'm thinking 20 to 25, 25 to 30 maybe. But focus on the run, man, and again, I heard Tunch Elkin say this today on SteelersLive.com. Same thing I said on Tuesday. If I'm them, I'm running a whole bunch of three wide receiver sets. Three wide. Or it might have been Dave and Dave. Actually, it wasn't Tunch. It was uh, Dave Bryant from Steelers Depot. I'm coming out in three wide. I'm putting Vance McDonald at that tight end spot. I'm putting Ben Roethlisberger in the shotgun with Le'Veon Bell either to his right or left or behind him with Ben being in the pistol. And I'm going up tempo, and I'm running the ball out of that set. Spread them out. Jacksonville is still the 21st ranked team against the run. We know they had problems with the run early in the season, which is the reason why a lot of people thought Le'Veon Bell was going to eat in that first game, but we know, we know the story. Now, numbers don't always tell the truth. You know, we always say men lie Women lie, numbers don't. But in some cases, numbers tell you what it is, but it don't tell you how it got to that point. So just because they're the 21st ranked, that doesn't mean they couldn't have a, a nice game. You know, don't mean they couldn't come out and shut the run down. So we got to be careful there. But I say we try to run that ball, and we got to up-tempo that thing. We got to up-tempo that thing. Got to try to up-tempo that thing. Now, I see Tony said he might try to go to the game, man. Which game are we talk about? <laughs> this one? Or are you talking about uh, if we get to the championship? Let me know, man, because I'm ready to do it. But, um, yeah. Up-tempo, three wide. Got Juju in the slot, AB on the outside, Martavis Bryant on the outside. Again, Vance McDonald, not Jesse James. And the reason why I say Vance McDonald, Vance McDonald is more of a vertical threat as well as Vance McDonald is better in the run game. Put him out there, and let's go. And up-tempo that thing, run the football, pass the football, balance. Keep them guessing. Got to do that. Now let's talk about defense real quick, man, because I brought something up to my brother Tony earlier today. What we cannot do, we cannot have the mentality of Blake Bortles can't beat us. Follow what I'm saying. I think the game plan needs to be make Blake, you know, Blake Bortles beat you. Stop the run. Make him beat you. Put it in his hand. Make him prove that he can have a day. And if that's that's the game plan, we snuff out the run and Blake Bortles come out there and throw for 500 yards, it's an anomaly. It happened. You can't be mad. You could be pissed off at the execution. But if the plan is to make that man beat you, I'm cool with that. However, let's go back to what I just said. We can't go in there with the mentality saying he can't beat us. Because we definitely, as fans, remember this. But the, the team and the coaches, even though some a lot of these players weren't there, Tomlin needs to definitely remember when we faced off against Timmy Tebow in Denver. And this guy has probably his best passing effort against our Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs. We can't mess around and go in there thinking that Blake Bortles can't do it because we thought Tim Tebow couldn't do it. 
and mess around and let this boy be Blake Bortles knife us up. Deep shots, intermediate shots, quick passes. No, sir. <laughs> so we got to stay disciplined to say, okay, we're going to go with this game plan, but be mindful of the fact that, the, you know, hey, the, he's, a, he's a quarterback. Don't be so lax on him, you know, speaking to the corners. Don't be giving all this cushion and all that thinking he can't do nothing. We still got to respect him as a quarterback. However, have the mentality of saying, you going to beat us. Leonard Fournette ain't going to beat us. Ivory's not going to beat us. And Yeldon and whoever else, I don't even know who's all active, but assuming Ivory for sure and, and you know, Fournette, they, we ain't letting them beat us. Here's what else I think we need to do. If we get them in situations where it's third and long, you know, third and intermediate, third and five, third, anywhere from third and five to third and 10, anywhere in that range, we need to spy. Definitely need to spy Blake Bortles because he showed us that he, he'll he take off and run. He did it against us a couple times, but he definitely did it last week when he couldn't throw the football. All right. Definitely need to spy him with somebody. You know, if we're, if we're in a nickel or if we're in a dime package, depending on the personnel they come out in, you know, if they come out, you know, if they get out of character and they come out in 11 personnel or something like that, I think it favors us. Um, but we'll have to see what they do. Are they going to stay in like a more of a, you know, a jumbo or a heavy package, you know, with two tight ends and things like that? You know, they probably will come out like that with a fullback trying to get the ball running. But anytime they go into something different, you know, where it's a favorable matchup for us to put more um, DBs on the field, like a nickel, and maybe it's only two or three wideouts, spy one of them linebackers to make sure he can't take off and run and contain him, contain the pocket. We got to contain him. Because you just don't want him, you know, when you get teams in third and long, you definitely don't want them to, to convert running the football you know, from the quarterback. That's a backbreaker. So that leads me to my next point. What they definitely need to do as well, run uh, a, lot of, a lot of zone coverage. Run zone. Now, y'all know a lot of times y'all hear me say it. A lot of you guys say we got to go, man. We got to go, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> we need to run zone. That way, in those, in those situations, I'm not saying we can't run man at all. But again, if you get them in third and long, third and intermediate, Go zone so everybody's watching the quarterback play in their area. Make him beat you. Don't go man, you know, in them scenarios. You know, you're definitely going to have to mix up your defense, obviously. But in those scenarios, I would rather not go man if you got guys back turned to the quarterback. He runs first down. So I think when we get him into advantageous situations for us defensively, third and nine, third and ten, third and eleven, et cetera, et cetera, run zone. Everybody's watching. Put a spy on him. Ain't nowhere for him to escape. That's how we're going to win the game. If the Steelers, listen, again, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to sit here and expect uh, the Steelers to be the explosive offense that we want them to be. I, I would like that. But what I'm saying, when I say I'm not expecting it, what I'm basically saying is I'm not even going to jump out there and say, man, they need to score 30, 40 points. They don't. I think it's very, very possible for the Steelers to score at least 21, and that can be enough to win this game. Again, go back and look at Jacksonville, man. You know, their offense is really not an offense that scares anybody. If you can smother the run or just contain it, you know, you're going to give up a little bit, but just contain it. Keep them to 17 points. Heck, I wouldn't even care if the game was 21 to 20 and we won. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Let's let's we can make this a slow paced game, run the football, control the clock, milk the clock, and let's get out of there. Cool with that. But we're gonna have to be disciplined, man, um, against the run game. And I think we're gonna be ready for it. You know, I don't I don't expect to have any leaky faucets, if you will, or spring any leaks against them this time. You know, if you go back and look at the first game, and that's why I went back and checked it out. Again. Two minutes left in the game, Leonard Fournette breaks out 91-yard run, which boosts his stats. Before that, I think the dude was like 26 for 90 or something like that. Because, it, you know, I remember looking at the calculations. It ended up being like 3.3 or 3.4 a carry. If we can hold Leonard Fournette to that, we could. 
<laughs> you know, if you give up an 80, 90, even a 100-yard rusher, and that's it, that ain't scoring a lot of points with that team. You know, you would think that's not going to give them enough points. So smother the run enough, put the cap on it a little bit, hold them to under 20 points. I think the Steelers walk out of there with a win. I really do. I really do. I just don't believe that Jacksonville's offense will sustain. And, and again, I feel the same way about them as I feel with um, the Eagles. I mean, I'm sorry, not the Eagles, but Case Keenum. I think it's almost like that. You know, and even though Case Keenum is actually outplaying Blake Bortles, I don't believe in either one of those guys going far in the playoffs. You know, if they mess around and get past us, I don't think they beat New England. I, I definitely don't think that happens. And even though it would be, a, you know, a nice matchup seeing that defense against Tom Brady, but I don't think Blake Bortles, a Blake Bortles-led team, at, at some point, I know defense wins championships, but at some point you're going to have to perform way better than this kid has been performing to go deep in the playoffs or win a Super Bowl. So with that being in the Steelers' favor, it being redemption, you know, paying them back (laughs) for what they did in week five, Ryan Shazier coming to practice this week, you know, what this could be potentially, 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 could potentially be Ben Roethlisberger's last game at Heinz Field. Think about that. Could be. Could be. They beat the Jaguars. The Titans lose. And the Steelers have to go to Foxborough. And they'll say that, you know, whatever happens there, this could very well be Ben Roethlisberger's last game. You know, we have to start talking about that, guys, because at the very best, we got Ben Roethlisberger for two more years. That's at the most. If he plays his contract out, I don't expect him to resign. <laughs> no. Ben Roethlisberger is not going to play football, in my opinion, closer to 40. I don't think that happens. We really got to start looking at that, but that's another conversation that we'll have after this season. But that's the truth of it, man. So it's a lot riding on this game, man, not just the fact of winning and potentially going to the Super Bowl, but it's a lot. You know, the Steelers cannot let a Jaguar team come in there and beat them twice at Heinz Field after a bye. It's just so much riding on this game. I think the Steelers will be up for it. Tomlin going to have him ready to play, which I think he has our team ready to play every week. You know, I just think that's cliche when people say that. They're going to be ready to go. If they execute, they put up 21 points. I think that's enough to beat the Jaguars. And that's it. Keys to victory once again. Stop the run game. Minimize their run game. Play a little more zone coverage, especially when you get them in, get them in third down situations. Gap integrity. There you have it. Offensively, balance. Run the football. Because think about it. Le'Veon Bell had 15 carries for about 47 yards, right? He didn't touch the ball that often as far as handing it off. But if you go back and look at the game, it was quite a few runs that Bell had that was 10-plus yards. He was getting chunks. Run the football, man. But do it from a spread formation. Let's do some no huddle. Get some tempo going. Get a lead early, and I think that's the key. Get a lead. Think about this, too. I totally forgot this until I went back and checked. Y'all realize the Steelers was winning that game in the third quarter, 9-7? to seven? <laughs> think about that we were winning if Ben Roethlisberger doesn't throw those pick sixes hey I'm just saying and that's the biggest key to victory don't turn the ball over you cannot turn the ball over Ben Roethlisberger it definitely can't give up two pick sixes so think about what I just said guys in the third quarter the Steelers were up 9-7 to seven. think about that Ben throws two pick sixes. That's 14 more points. And then when the game is virtually out of reach, two minutes left in the game, they hand it off to Leonard Fournette. Bad gap integrity. He breaks out a 91-yard touchdown. This is a very winnable game by the Pittsburgh Steelers. The way the offense has been playing here of late. Come on. Very winnable game by the Steelers. But again, let's, let's be real. They have to be on their P's and Q's to get the dub defensively. You got to control that run game and we cannot over, we cannot turn over the ball. Uh, 
on offense. And I think if they take care of that business, they'll get a win, and we'll see what happens from there. So let me take a look at what some of you guys are saying here, man. Of course, you always get somebody from the opposing team in here. I'm going to mess with my guy here, a NBA Live Philly, go Jags or whatever. You know, it is what it is. All right, guys, so let's see what you guys are saying. Let me scroll back up to the top here. And I'll, you know, I'll stay on for a few more minutes. Chill with you guys for a minute here. Oh, a couple things I did want to mention. Let's talk about the Le'Veon Bell thing. <sighs> Some of you guys may not know by now, but, you know, he was quoted, you know, t saying to Jeremy Fowler that, you know, if basically he's prepared to retire <laughs> or just sit out and hold out before he'll play on another tag. Listen, I'm not upset with Le'Veon Bell. It's business at the end of the day. I just wish our players at times would pick and choose when they say things. Even as far as, as high as Ben Roethlisberger, he did it last year. I don't need you saying right after you lose the AFC championship, if it's going to be another year. Like, I don't need y'all to create that drama. Now, I'm not telling these grown men how to act. I'm just saying you got to sometimes, you got to realize when you are a star athlete, you know, you, you are a celebrity at this point, and you know everything you say is going to create a story. Everything. That's why, you know, Marshawn Lynch, whether y'all hate him or love him, the way he handled the press, in my opinion, was the best. Because it still created a story, but it was a story about nothing because he wouldn't say nothing. So all I'm saying is, man, like, we know contract time and all that stuff is coming soon, but come on, man, that could be, could have been a potential distraction. Luckily enough, it was done, you know, yesterday, where it's later in the week. But it's like, come on, man, like, just be a little more careful with your replies, you know, because you know the media's job is to try to pull news out of you. So I feel like kind of, you know, try to divert that answer, you know, def you know, deflect that question until it's time to answer that, you know. So that's all I got on that. And as far as, uh, again, the cornerbacks at the Jags, I love these guys' demeanor. You know, it's funny, though, because I did see Jalen Ramsey uh, uh, earlier, you know, kind of saying he's going to have to be on, on all his P's and Q's. Uh, to, you know, check A.B., you know, so it's in his head a little bit. But, hey, again, I love the tenacity of those dudes, man. They're going to be ready to play. They're going to be pumped up. And let's not forget, guys, last time I checked, the weather. <laughs> supposed to be 18 degrees out there uh, as a high in Pittsburgh. So that should be interesting as well. So, all right, man, let me see what some of you guys are saying, man. More importantly, uh, let's see what y'all got going on here. Go back up to the top. Uh, okay, Deron Smith. Oh, he, he wants me to talk about the Teddy Bridgewater conversation me and him had on, uh, on Facebook. And I want to hear what you guys have to say. He basically asked me how I feel about the Steelers going after Bridgewater after the season. I like Teddy Bridgewater. I just, in my opinion, I just don't see where he fits. Uh, not so much his play style, but even if you want to relate that, I mean, you could kind of, what you get out of Teddy Bridgewater, when, you know, a guy that you think could maybe run the ball, the pocket breaks down. I look at it as you have a guy like that already on the roster, you know, and Josh Dobbs. Um, one of the things that people have already, you know, has always been at Teddy Bridgewater about since being in the NFL, not when he was in college, but since being in the NFL, you know, Bridgewater has always gotten knocked a little bit on his accuracy or, you know, him, the willingness to take deep shots down the field. And I'm saying it's very close to where you see Josh Dobbs. So I feel like that guy's already there. Um, I feel like the Steelers would need a mix. You know, I, I like the, 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 look at the contrast right now between a Roethlisberger, a Landry Jones, <coughs> excuse me, and a Josh Dobbs. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if I would want two guys with a similar type playing style. And I know um, Daron uh, also said, you know, think about when we had Vic, think about when we had Leftwich. But again, it seemed like the Steelers have always kept kind of a mix you know, Vic was a guy like that, and it, he was the one. It was Ben and then Landry Jones who were opposites. 
And then when Leftwich was there, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Charlie Batch was one of the backups, and then Roethlisberger. You see what I'm saying? So I, I just don't see them having two guys that are eerily similar in terms of their, you know, what they can do athletic-wise. So I don't know if they would go after him. And, um, you know, it, but it's possible. You know, I, listen, I'm not Kevin um, Colbert. I don't know. Just just my gut feeling on that. But you guys definitely comment here, man. I want to see what you guys, how you guys feel about that. Uh, <laughs> Kenyon said he do the same thing. Yeah, man, we be out there scouting like we out there for real, for real. Uh, let's see. Kelvin Colbert. Yeah, me too, man. It would be great to see the Titans, to see you guys go out there and handle their business, man. Let me see what else you guys are saying here. Kenyon Wright said he was at the game, the Rams game last week, and uh, Atlanta just had way more experience. Yeah, man, sometimes it comes down to that. It, isn't that crazy? You know, as, as a fan, you sit back, like, you know, because some people didn't play football or they wasn't a part of a team sport or what have you. And you hear that, and I know some people would probably say that's cliche, but it's real. Sometimes it's that experience, man, and it's not just experience in terms of how the player is playing, but just being in that situation, you know, because emotions are running high and things like that, and being able to keep your composure and staying focused, all of that stuff matters. And again, it does matter when guys have had more time in the NFL and little nuances and things like that. So you're right, man. And again, that's why I just don't, I don't know, man. I don't know about the Vikings as a whole because that experience is just not there, man, with a guy like Case Keenum in terms of being the guy in that situation. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Darius Carter says, Big Ben play like he's been doing for the last two months. We're good. And take his check downs. Abs hey, I'm with you. If 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 that Roethlisberger shows up, <laughs> this guy that we've seen since what? What, second half of the Colts game? If this is the guy that plays, I think he's going to give the Jacksonville Jaguars a, a little bit of fits. You know, because it ain't like we haven't faced a great defense before. I mean, we faced the Baltimore Ravens this year. You know what I mean? So it's not like we're not used to playing against very talented defenses. But we are a very talented offense. And we all know sometimes better offense beats better defense any day. You know what I mean? So take his check downs. And, and you know what? As much as I hate them, I'm not even opposed for them to – you know, run some of those little quick screens. I don't necessarily like when we run them to Martavis Bryant because it just seems like it takes Bryant a little too much time to giddy up and go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But some quick dump off screens, maybe the A B, you know, some smoke screens. Let's run some um let's run some tight end screens, you know, with a guy like McDonald. You know, the little screen that we used to run to Heath Miller from time to time. Let's see that happening. Maybe a quick wide receiver screen or a guy like Juju that you know as soon as he get the ball, he going to turn and go and fight for yards. I'm not opposed to that. And you slow down the rush. You know what I mean? And get the, get some guys out in space, man. So there's a lot of things that the Steelers could do. Uh, my boy Tony says, I don't want to be saying the reason we lost because Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> Look, for y'all that don't know, for years, man, Every time me and Tony, because this is a ritual, we talk all through the week. And we always talk before the game and we talk after the game. And, you know, we always talk like uh, usually on Monday when I travel into D.C. And I'm on my lunch break walking around outside and I have to call him. He has always said, man, I'm only concerned <laughs> about one person, Ben Roethlisberger. Because Tony has, has been preaching this to me for years, saying, look, man, I don't know if Ben is really that the most cerebral guy. Like, And what he meant was the way Peyton Manning used to play, you know, the way Brady has evolved into, and even a guy like Drew Brees. And you got to kind of say maybe Tony was right. Now, Ben is capable of doing it, but what, what Tony was saying is Ben, ben falls in love with the deep shot on like a third and three. That's what he's talking about. 
where a guy like Peyton Manning was always going to look for the check down. Brady will do that. You know what I mean? But Ben, it's, it's many times that we've seen over the years, and sometimes it works. And, hey, when you got Antonio Brown going one-on-one, you take a shot. But a lot of those times, man, it's guys wide open under the middle, in the flat. And we need two, three yards. Dump it down. And Ben has been doing that here of late. Has he not? He's been doing it, and he's been running for first down. So if that Roethlisberger shows up, I think we're good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Myron Sanders said, the key is K-I-S-S, use bell, dink and dunk, that cover three scheme, don't try to attack downfield, stack the box on D, make Bortles beat you downfield, do that, Steelers will win. I fully agree. And you know, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars employ a lot of cover four as well. Um, also, what they do, they run a lot of twists, even when it's just a four-man rush. So, and I'm sure, you know, the line has been watching, but they got to pay attention to stuff like that, man, because they do some creative things with Miles Jack, stacking him in certain positions and then sneaking him around. But like I said, that defense is monstrous, man. I mean, they uh, uh, think about this. I'm going to keep it real, really real, real quick. Even though we led in sacks, but if the Steelers defense as a whole, secondary-wise, and just performance from the whole defense, perform the way the Jaguars have this year and or the Ravens. I'm just talking about numbers and takeaways and stuff like that. Man, the Steelers would walk through the, would easily walk through the Super Bowl, in my opinion. Because I'm saying right now, again, this is not just my biasness speaking. We all know this. The Steelers offense has the capability to be the most potent offense in the league. If they had the defense to match, come on, man. Who beating them? And I'm talking about if they're clicking. Everybody can have an off game. But if they was clicking and they had as many takeaways as the Ravens or the Jaguars, who is beating them? Like, realistically, out of the teams that's left, if we could strap up like that, what happened against the Patriots never happens. They don't give up a touchdown. Gronkowski ain't catching three straight shots with three minutes or so left in the game. It, ain't, it wouldn't happen. Because we would be strapping them up. We would have forced them to beat us. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. The Steelers don't have that, guys. We have a very spotty defense. But if we had that, come on, man. Come on. Send the producer says, Steelers run defense will be tested against Jacksonville running backs. Yes, it will, brother. Uh, Jordan Hession says, in pit, uh, in pit right now for the Pens game. The excitement is real for the Steelers game. Let's get this W. Absolutely. Shout outs to my Pens. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit, man. DJ Bingham says, bro, when do we get our full rosters back? I'm not sure what you're referring to, my brother. Uh, let's see. What else y'all got going on here? I'm trying to mix it up, man. I see some of the same names repeating. Jesse Armado says, Ben wins Super Bowl for our seventh because he wears number seven. Hey, that would be the luck, right? That I'd take it. <laughs> At this point, I'd take whatever it is, whether it's luck, skill, Fate, I take it, man. Because I'm telling y'all, let me let me drop some sadness on y'all real quick. Bro, like I said, man, at the most we got Ben for two more seasons. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, are we gonna strike goal again when we gotta find a quarterback? We could very well go through a stretch where we are, I mean, eight and eight, seven and nine. I mean, it could happen. We could be going through a stretch after Ben where the Browns or somebody like that leading the division is possible. Or we could strike all again. You know, we could find find the diamonds, if you if you you know, if you will, like like we did with Ben. Ben came in off the bench, rookie, won 14 games or 15, whatever the record was. And then next thing you know, we get him the Super Bowl right after that. And he's been him the, the whole time. That don't happen every day. But like I was telling my man Tony earlier, listen, I will settle for a Dak Prescott type of guy that's considered a game manager. I'd take that. 
with a potent defense. Because I think our defense is going to continue to get better. Because I think both Tomlin and Colbert, all of them seem to be vested on getting the defense together. Even going out there and getting a guy like Joe Hayden, we usually don't do that. I think they're going to continue to focus on defense, defense, defense. So it could get to a point where a year or two, the Steelers got a shutdown defense, but a shaky offense. <laughs> so like I said, even if it, if it means getting a game manager type guy, I'm cool with that if the defense is solid. And maybe it'll be like a Jacksonville Jaguars. We got a eh, quarterback, but that defense so good, we stay in games. We could definitely be going through that, man. So it, it's critical now. If we're going to get a Super Bowl in the near future, it's got to be now. Because the, the likelihood of getting it once Ben is gone is going to take a minute. Official Jump Man says Jacksonville gets credit as well for being aggressive and not giving up. Absolutely. And that's the thing, too. We we can't get lulled to sleep now. They know it's, it's a win or go home situation. They might come out and run a whole different game plan. Will they? I'm not sure. One, it being very cold, and for a guy who's not that good at quarterbacking as far as pure passing, it's not going to be any easier for him, you know, with it being 18 degrees or whatever it's going to be out there. So the likelihood of them coming out and trying to stretch it, stretch the field, it, I don't believe that, but you cannot act like it can't happen. Or a deep play action shot because we're selling out to the run. And then our good old man, our good old boy Mike Mitchell is back there, and we and we're asking him to to cover a deep shot, deep play action, and we already know how that's gonna go. Trying to get his help over the top. So gotta keep their eyes open, man. That's one thing they definitely gotta do. Uh the Hawk says this is going to be a blowout. Potentially. Potentially. Listen, man, I, again, I'll put the Steelers offense against anybody. <laughs> he says a guy can dream, right? Hey, listen, let's be honest. Did, did, did you guys think we were going to beat the Titans the way we did in that game? That was the week I was in Vegas, and luckily enough, it was Thursday night, so I didn't have no problem watching the game. I was shocked. I mean, it was very close through the first half, and I was very shocked to see how the Steelers just blew up in the second half, and how did we do it? Roethlisberger, five wide, no huddle, up-tempo. So it could very well end up being, a, it could be. The Steelers have the potential, in my opinion, to put 30 on anybody because they're that talented on the offense when they're clicking. So we'll see. Rail Fact says, do you think playoff experience factors into this game at all? I think so, man. I, I really do. Again, we kind of addressed that a little earlier. I, I think it will. You know, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars is similar to what I said about the New York Yankees this past season. A year early, year too early. You know, they, the, like the Yankees, they outperformed what everybody's expectations was for this past season. So look out going into the next season, especially seeing what them, what them guys did um, offensively already on the offseason. But that's how I feel about the Jags, man. I think that defense is is going to be a problem for several years, but I think they're a little early. They're a bit early. Like if and some people might not believe this, but if somehow Eli Manning finds his way down there, <laughs> with Tom Coughlin reuniting with him, <laughs> bruh. Okay, and they got a run game. That's the problem that Eli has had has not had in the last couple years. With the Giants. I don't think Eli Manning is washed up. I think he's... I take him. Like, imagine if Roethlisberger retired. I take Eli for a year or two. <laughs> he's good enough to win on a team or a good team. Let that happen. Jaguars going to be a problem, Jack. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, Mariano Papa says, uh, what do you think about what's going on with Mike Mitchell? Uh, elaborate. What do you mean? Maybe it's something I missed. You think Le'Veon Bell will resign? Nah, man. L listen, uh, what up, Cooper? No. There's is no way I think you turn. Cause listen, man, his tag is gonna be like 14.5 if they tag him. You ain't telling me you walking away from that. You you're not gonna tell me you're going to retire rather than make a guaranteed 14 million dollars. Cause this is what you would do, right? The boys made uh, listen, he made about four million in his rookie year, right? He made 12.5 this year. <laughs> So he's already tripled that, okay? Now, 
you going to tell me next year if they this coming season coming up, they say, look, we got to tag you again. You going to tell me you walking away from that 14.5? Look at how much money you've made in two years. Just $26 million. Why wouldn't you play on the tag and then be like, forget y'all, I'm going to resign then. You see what I'm saying? At least play for that, that year <laughs> and make the money. It'd be downright stupid to walk away from that. I think that's just talk. It's no way. No way. No way. Uh, let's see. What else you guys going? Let me, got, man, let me scroll down a little further. I know a lot of you guys say, y'all don't care how long I talk, man, <laughs> when we talk and still it. So I ain't in no rush, but I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here in a minute here. What else you guys got going on, man? Uh, Stefan Samla or Samlil. Hope I'm saying that correct. He says you can't stop Grunk. I mean, you could contain him, man. It's just like there's been games where AB has been contained. You know, of course you can't stop great players, but you can contain them. Nah, I don't want to draft Lamar Jackson. I knew, loved him, loved the way he plays, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. We, we got to see how that's gonna translate, man. And um. And I think I know what you're saying, though. You're saying you might as well get him if you're going to do Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, it, you know, because Jackson has accuracy issues. You even saw it in the bowl game that he played in. It, nah, 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 nah. Adam Worthy says, I think Juju will be a huge X factor in this game. I say we should try to get him and Vance going early. Hey, listen, <laughs> I can't say it no better. I agree with you 100%. You get Juju and Vance McDonald going, it could be serious problems for the Jacksonville Jaguar. Charles Stevens says, Sim, I hope we could get uh, two good linebackers to show up that middle and two good corners and we'll be ready. Um, I will agree with you partially. Uh, we need a safety in there also. So if we got a good corner and then a good safety, i take that over two good corners. If that makes sense. Because I think we got something in Cam Sutton. I think we're going to see a little something from him. Um, I still think Artie Burns could turn out to be okay. But you give him another year. Year three, y'all know that's the magic number for the Steelers. And then Joe Hayden. You know, we'll see if they're going to keep him. You know, so I think we could get by with the corners we have. Um, and they could play a little better. I would rather have another good corner. And a safety rather than two good corners and two middle and, and you know two inside backers. Just my opinion. Uh Devontae Williams says Steelers need to draft uh Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah, 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 man. Listen, I I'm good with all of that. But I, I like that kid Smith, man, from um Georgia, that that inside backer. He's a problem out there. Jinx says the Jazz defense is crazy, bro. That could be what wrecks them. Yeah, we'll see. Listen, the Jags' defense is not invincible. I mean, how in the world did Jimmy Garoppolo do what he did? You see what I'm saying? With a less talented team than the Steelers offensively. So it's not like they can't be got. You know, so we'll see. Michael Daggett says, Pittsburgh Steelers could be in the next Super Bowl. What is your opinion? Yeah, they could. My opinion has been, and even just this past week, on Tuesday, I said, I don't think the Steelers win the Super Bowl this year. If I had to give my real answer, I think we can, but I don't have the confidence to feel like, oh, yeah, we're going to win it. I don't because I am not. I don't know what off what defense shows up. That's my concern, man. It's, our past defense gives up too many chunk plays. And every now and then we decide that we don't want to we don't want to stop the run. So it's I don't have the confidence in them. So. That's why I'm saying I, I just don't know about us winning the Super Bowl. But it's possible. It's very possible. But I just don't, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't go with that one just yet. A-Train 904 says, we only play one, uh, one frozen or frozen game, I think you're saying, that had that was in Cleveland and beat them. But that ain't saying much. It has been in the 30s and 40s the past two weeks here in Florida. Last three days have been 70. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in Tampa last week, man, and the high was 55. That was the day we were leaving. It's crazy. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to go ahead and just about wrap it up. Uh, what up, Chiefs Kingdom? Chiefs Kingdom says, hey, 
Can I get enough time to throw in Matt? No, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all, listen. Let me let me let me kick some real to y'all real quick. Not to be crazy or be disrespectful or anything like that. Listen. Let me give y'all some quick science. Guys that YouTubers like myself, and I'm small fish in this pond of these big guys. When we stream and, and things like that, we prefer to talk about what the stream is about only because it's only fair to those who are viewing. You know what I mean? Like people are here tonight to hear me talk about the Steelers keys to victory. So I'm not going to talk about Madden. <laughs> you know what I mean? So save that for a Madden stream or maybe a Sim standard podcast, you know, when we're talking about Madden or something like that. So no disrespect, but nah, I'm not getting into Madden. Kenyon Rice said Garoppolo did a lot of rollouts and was very accurate. Yeah, see, that's, the, you know what, Kenyon? <clears throat> that's an interesting point, man, when we think about what type of quarterback the Steelers want to go after next. I think we definitely, you know, could benefit from a guy who can move around. Like, imagine, I know this going to sound crazy, but imagine the, the mobility of an Alex Smith. Take an Alex Smith and put him on our team. With those weapons. Good Lord. You see what I'm saying? Because, I mean, he's he's doing it in Kansas City. Or, like, who I would love to have drafted if he, if he was still there. I knew he was going to be gone. But there's a country accent coming out. Y'all heard me say gone. Gone. I knew he was going to be gone was Patrick Mahomes. I really wanted Patrick Mahomes in the draft, man. I really wanted that kid. Because his deep ball is serious. And it's accurate. But, hey, things happen. All right, man, so I'll read two more here, and then I'll get out of here, man. Go spend some time with the family upstairs. Uh, Charles Stevens says, that's another thing. I do not like Sean Spence. <laughs> that dude can't play. He can't. <laughs> this dude wasn't nothing when <laughs> he was with us before. Why they brought him back, I don't know. It's because at, at this point of the season, you bring people back who are, are more familiar with your system. And Sean Spence played there for a long time. I mean, look at the crop of people who are out there. That's that's what we got to think about sometimes as fans. I know we all go through it. We all get emotional and be mad at the coaches and stuff. But we have to understand. It's just like my father-in-law, man. He always screaming, why is Mike Mitchell out there? And why is he? I'm like, okay, at this point, who else we going to put out there that's going to do better? We've seen what Robert Golden does. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So once the, the season starts, for the most part, the best of the best is out there. And, you know, looking at who was in the free agency pool, I just did a quick look at it. I don't, you know, maybe I missed somebody. Spence is probably the best you're going to get as far as being able to plug and play the very next week. And that's why he's out there. But you notice, you know, LJ Fort, excuse me, is getting a lot more reps in the dime and stuff like that. So it's still a rotational thing. Relfax says, uh, does Todd Haley stay after this season? I think somebody else said the same thing. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to pick it back on what Jesse Amada said. I'm getting that same impression, man, just listening to certain stuff was going on. If Ben comes back, it does kind of sound like maybe Feetner uh, will take over that job. How many of y'all know who Feetner is? I'm just going to call his last name. Um but yeah, it sounds like maybe he gets the job. It does kind of sound like Todd Haley. It sounds like there's a little friction there between him and Ben. And that's always been the talk. So it, it seems like maybe the, the, the end of the road has come for him. Hey, Corey Weldo, uh, I don't have a problem with you asking that, but I'm going to just give you a tip. Man, people don't subscribe to your channel when you ask them to do it, man. Uh, that's just a, a YouTube tip. You want people to find you organically. You want real subs. And what I mean by that is let them see whatever it is you're doing and let them sub for that. You know, of course, after every video, I always say, hey, man, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, that's just advertising. But I'm talking about directly saying, hey, sub. People are not going to do that. And the difference between saying it here in my video for me is you're watching. So I'm basically saying if you're currently watching, hey, don't miss out, sub. But don't just randomly ask people to sub to you and they don't even know what you do. You feel me? They're not going to sub. That's just a little tip. Uh, no, nah, Ch nah, Chiefs Kingdom, you good. You good. You good, man. I was just, you know, just putting it out there. 
you know, it, like I said, I ain't mean no disrespect or nothing by it. I'm just, just saying. Um, all right, guys, I said I was going to stay for a while, but, uh, let me get out of here. One, this is the last one. I'll give Adam Worthy the last one here. Do you think Dobbs has the potential to become a solid quarterback after Ben, or do we just go ahead and draft another quarterback depending on when Ben retires? Definitely draft another one and let Dobbs earn it. I don't think Dobbs, looking at what he is, even I think he has potential, but I don't know if he's a potential starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll have to see. At any rate, I think you still go on the draft and get another guy and let them battle it out. See, you know, do a... Hey, Seattle Seahawks, think about what they did with Russell Wilson. You know, they paid Matt Flynn all that money, drafted Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson took the starting job. <laughs> so that's what you would do in that scenario. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it, man. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Oh, wow. y'all, y'all Look, y'all see what your boy Corey just wrote? <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. This is exactly why nobody's going to sub to you. You know what I mean? So get out of here, man. <laughs> Look at that, yo. Make sure y'all give him hell for that. Look at his comment. Make sure y'all jump all over him for that. I'm actually going to stay a few more minutes just so I can see y'all rip him apart. What an idiot. Uh, Let's see. There you go. Can my boy Kenya Wright be on it, man? Randy Fittner, baby. Um, But, you know, they don't know who it is. They don't know who he is, man. Uh, The day I started hating Mike Mitchell was when he let Doug Baldwin go for an 80-yard touchdown using his shoulder instead of wrapping up. Yeah, the Black Rattler, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, Mike Mitchell is crazy, man. I, listen, you know, he's serviceable, man. You know, he gives you a little bit against the run, this, that, and the third, but eh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, man, you make sure y'all get that dude hell, man. I'm not even going to block him, but I want y'all to let him know that he can't be in here talking like that, man. He got a little, got a little feelings hurt, you know, just because I'm trying to give him some game. Trying to get a man some game. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get a man some game, and he gets pissed off at me. That's crazy. Whatever, fam. But look, that's going to do it, man. Um, hey, loved it, guys. I had a good time chopping it up with you guys, man. So hopefully on Tuesday, we'll be talking about a victory. And by the way, speaking of which, it's going to have to be a pre-recorded video. Uh, you know, Martin Luther King Day on Monday, which means... I don't have to work. Our office is closed, so I have to travel in on Tuesday. Won't be home in time enough to, you know, to do this. So, basically, guys, we're going to do a pre-recorded video Monday night. Maybe I might even do it after the game Sunday so it's fresh. Then I'll throw it up on Tuesday, and uh, you guys can come through and check it out that way. All right, so that's going to do it. Holler at you guys later, y'all. Oh, thank you, guys. I see y'all ripping them a new one. <laughs> Oh, man. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Y'all are the best, man. I love you guys, man. I'll catch y'all later. And again, if you haven't already, you enjoy what you saw today, subscribe. If you don't, don't. That's how you ask people to subscribe. But if you are a subscriber, make sure you hit that bell, man. Ring that bell. Cut on that notification so you know when the new videos are there. And I promise it'll never hurt you to hit that like button. But until next time, that's going to do it for now. Here we go, Steelers. Hopefully, we're talking about the Steelers advancing and maybe, just maybe, an AFC championship game in Pittsburgh. Oh, wouldn't that be crazy? All right, man, that's going to do it. I'll holler at you guys later. Y'all be good. Peace.